right, welcome back for his third appearance on Down the I-10 with PD and Leah. <laughs> to, and plus a bonus appearance on the PHX Coyotes postgame show. Welcome to oh, Down the right. I-10, Tucson Roadrunners head coach, Jay Verity. Jay, welcome back. <laughs> yeah, thanks for having me. Jay, you know, one of the things we want to talk about today, one of the main reasons we're visiting with you today is we're going to talk about injuries and players, but not as they affect the Coyotes, more how they affect you. When Clayton Keller goes down, you lose Kraus for the year, Keller for the year, there's holes. And your job as the head coach of the minor league team is develop the players down in Tucson to be ready to get the call when those guys go down. The problem is, as you've seen over and over again this season, is when they leave, now you have holes. So we're going to talk a little bit about how you've filled those holes and how you've been able to keep your lineup going forward in some of the names that you have. But let's first start with some of your injuries because you've got a bunch of guys on your IR too. McGregor, Hudson Elianuk, and Liam Kirk are still out for you. Do you have any more guys that are on the injured reserve right now? No, those are the three. Uh, those guys have been long-term injuries for us. Um, for a while, uh, it hurts, hurts in the depth. And obviously, uh, there's a lot of guys up top that are injured as well. And, and that's kind of where we get into a scenario we're going to talk about today. So you sit there and you see, okay, so fashion gets the call and, and we've had this discussion with you earlier in the year. You've got to be excited for a kid like Hudson Fashing, captain of the team works hard, prepares the right way. You're happy for him, but what kind of a hold does that leave on your club? Yeah, well, he plays... Uh, 20 minutes a night in the American Hockey League, 20 to 22 minutes a night. He plays on our, you know, one of our top lines on the right wing, plays on our power play, plays on our penalty kill. Every situation that you could use a player, um, we use Hudson in. So according to John Ferguson, there's a number of players on your team that still might get a recall this season. Ben McCartney, Boko Amama, Blake Spears, to name a few. Is there value in getting them a, a taste in the NHL? And then if they do how much more does that hurt you losing those guys well it doesn't hurt us like our job here is to make sure those guys are ready so like it, it, it's just what we signed up for down here um, you know if there is injury if there is a transition period where guys are uh, roster spots are available in the NHL that's where we want our guys and you know that's the language we use when we're talking to our guys is hey today you have to be ready because tomorrow who knows you may be driving up the i-10 um, and that's a lot of what we do down here is sure. We want to win hockey games. Uh, we're competitive people. The players are competitive people. The coaches are competitive people. Um, you know, yeah, we want to win every time we head to the rink for game day, but we also understand that we're trying to help these young men achieve their, their lifelong dream, which is to play in the NHL and not just play games, but to be there for extended periods of time. And you look at the the guys, and you, again, we've talked about where you get your first pool of players. You're going to the East Coast League. You've got an affiliation with Rapid City. So give, I'm going to give you an example. You might not know this guy. So Quinn Winter, well, Quinn Witchers, they added him to the roster on February 27th, returned him on um, March 9th, added him again on the 15th, returned him on the 29th. So that's just one of the three guys they're getting. So you can see the revolving door going through Rapid City. Now, do you have a good relationship with the Rapid City coaches? Meaning, are you guys talking about their system play? Are you guys playing the same system? Like Coyotes and Roadrunners play similar systems. Easy to jump in. Do the does Rapid City play a similar system to you down in Tucson? Not not specifically. Um, those guys uh, play their own style. For us, uh, we have an unbelievable relationship with with Scott Burt. He's our head coach. He does an amazing job, and he's a lot like us. He's completely selfless. If he calls, if we call and we need a player, he's he's right there. He always lets the guys go. And uh, in Quinn's case, it's really interesting because he came out of college hockey and he was at our pro camp before, you know, before playing a whole lot of games. So he's here. His game is developing and growing. And every time he comes back, he has a little more confidence. He makes a couple more plays. He's able to pop a puck through the middle of the ice on a breakout. Um, so these are guys that are growing with us as they're transitioning through the East Coast League and into the American League. And, um, you know, I think in, in Witchie's case, if he becomes the seventh D or the eighth D, then we try and get him back to Rapid City right away because he's a big part of their organization as well. And we don't want to keep him out of the lineup 
uh, too long. And, and we know if something happens, he's a flight away and he's right back here. And he, he knows where to go. He's comfortable uh, with the surroundings. And, and he's a, he's a plug-and-play type player. So if you don't have a similar si- system to Rapid City and there's also college players coming in, how do you incorporate those players into your system? It's, it's actually a great time for American Hockey League coach. Um, it, the, the wins are a little tough to come by here uh, recently. But as a staff, we were laughing the other day it feels like September hmm. because we have a, a group of guys that have had a whole season of lessons, wrinkles, twists. Hey, in this system, we're going to do this. In this system, we're going to do that. We need to do this on the breakouts. We need to do that on the breakouts. So there's all kinds of these little lessons um, that you're learning throughout the season. And then you get a new group of players that come in. They've had none of that. And all of it is new and all of it's different. Um, So you have to have an initial teaching period. Then you have to have a lot of individual time with them. And then at this time, those guys that have been with you all year, those team meetings are shorter now. You know, it's getting into the time where they don't want to be in a meeting for 15 minutes. It's going to be seven minutes. It's going to be six minutes. It's going to be nine clips instead of 15 or 22, whatever, whatever the number is. So then you got to, you got to get off and you got to teach individually way more this time of year um, with the people who need the the honing of whatever it is. Jay, we talked about Fashing as your captain and he's moved up for the big club for right now. And you, you know, Michelli, Carcone, some guys that you've looked at to be the leaders of this club throughout this season. Have you found that this gives an opportunity for some other guys that maybe weren't showing that leadership ability or weren't showing captain qualities, seeing different players step forward and filling those roles? Yeah, it really has. You know, I think some guys have been like a Boko Amama has been a constant for us all year. Terry Broadhurst, who came in on a PTO, he's played a lot of games in the American Hockey League, 33 years old. He's been a real kind of guiding light for a lot of the guys that are still here in Tucson. But what it does, it opens up an opportunity for guys like Cam Karate, who've been in the organization and here a couple years. Uh, Ivan Prosvitov, a guy – who's in our net most nights now has a little bit bigger voice in the dressing room and they carry a little more weight when, when guys are up playing Carcone, Fash, uh, those types of guys are, are up. Um, you kind of just referred to it, but how do you continue the development of your key players when there is so much change in roster movement? Yeah, well, I, I think there's great lessons. Like you got to perform during chaos. It doesn't matter what's happening around you. Uh, all of us are professionals and we're responsible for our job when we come to the rink. And I think that's a, a really good lesson. So don't don't get caught up in what's going on. Just get, live in the moment. Live where your shoes are at. Hey, you know, like I'm in Tucson. My shoes are here. Like, let's go. It, all your focus is on Tucson. And it's just a day-by-day situation right now. Just live in the moment. Live today to, to your full development. Uh, the best of your ability, and and then we'll start with tomorrow. One of the players that you signed recently is a guy that played here at ASU, so some local people might know of him. Um, one, tell us how that contract came about, and how has Colin Theason fit into your lineup? Yeah, well, it's um, you know our our scouting staff, Sean Ferguson, uh, is out watching a lot of these guys that are available. Um, he he's had an unbelievable year. Obviously, played in Notre Dame for four came here as a grad transfer, had an unbelievable season. Uh, I've known the player from the past, coached coached against him in a different league. So there was some, a little bit of back history there uh, in terms of, I knew kind of who the player was. And in terms of how he's fitting in, he's been great for us. He's come down here with a real working mindset. He's growing uh, each day. And there's a transition between college hockey and pro hockey. And I think he's got a lot of the attributes that translate between those. You've added um, two other college free agents, Mitch Lewandowski from Michigan State and Phil, I'm going to butcher this name, Laganov, maybe? Was that correct? Uh, from correct. Vermont. All right, nailed it. Can you tell us um, what you can expect from them the remainder of this season? Yeah, these players are, it's a situation where these guys are coming in, uh, they're on tryout contracts. And they're looking for an opportunity for a contract for next year uh, and a transition. They were undrafted players 
And, um, you know, some teams have space like us right now because of injuries that we can bring these guys in. And uh, it keeps us from really going to the East Coast League and finding maybe another player that we would have used there for a period of time. So you see, we were talking about these college free agents specifically. Do you see any of these, specifically these three players, having a future with this organization or is it too early to tell or above your pay grade? I mean, well, how does that work? They just they have to show up every day and do their best, and, and then it's a big solid maybe? Well, I think that's it. I think it's an evaluation period. And I think as a group, when the season ends um, or there's player transactions that happen, then we evaluate uh, where those guys are at based on the time that they have here. So, you know, we're evaluating their games. We're evaluating their practice. We're looking at, hey, is this guy big enough? Is he strong enough? Does he have room to get stronger? Um, and a lot of times you do that in scouting, and it's it's from the outside. And, and I think you always know – players know coaches better. Coaches know players better when you actually get them for an extended period of time, two, three, four weeks. Uh, you're able to get them in game situations – watch them in practice. Like those are some, uh, some really good evaluation times. Um, a bunch of your leading scorers are with the coyotes or have been throughout the season. So who are those players who have stepped up and filled those offensive holes for you? Like where is the offense coming for this team right now? Yeah, I think the guys, um, you know, in this past little chunk of time that have, have done some really good things, uh, Ben McCartney has been uh, good for us. Cole Holtz has had some points from the back end. Ty Emerson's been producing from the back end. Those guys have been able to, to do some really good things. Cameron Hebing provides a ton of energy for us at all times. And, you know, his scoring has taken a little uptick as of lately. A guy like Terry Broadhurst, who just kind of anchors a line all the time. He moves all the way through our lineup. You know, one night he's on our first line, second line, third line. He's He's all over, just a real versatile guy. And those guys all kind of chip in um, as a unit together. Boko's been able to find the back of the net a couple times for us. And uh, that's always exciting because he, he provides so much energy outside of getting points for us. Yeah, and he's a guy that, and we talked about it earlier, that John Ferguson said he's a guy that he mentioned that may still be on that short list you know, to, to get a chance to play here. I think you know, you've talked about him being a leader there and doing a lot of things right. And I think this last stretch of games gives an opportunity to reward some of those players so we hope we see them but jay the, uh, this is not the season has not gone the way you had hoped we'll be real honest we look at the standings and a lot of it is for what we're talking about today injuries up top have been horrific and guys have been out much longer than anticipated and your roster has been just riddled with with players going up and down back and forth so as a coach, do you ever sit there at home at night eating your dinner, playing the what if game? Like, well, what, well, what if Barrett Hayton would have stayed with us all year? What if what if Mayo and, and Deneen would have been here all year? Do you sit there and do that or, or do you just you just buckle up and go in your own direction? Yeah, I think if you had that mindset as American Hockey League coach, you wouldn't be an American Hockey League coach very long. <laughs> yeah. Like, um, you know, we – we try to practice what we preach and we try to live in the moment. We don't get too far ahead down here. Um, hey, the lineup's probably going to change tomorrow. We got a magnet board. The magnet board, you can flip it around. I don't even have to try and remember what the numbers are because they change so much. <laughs> uh, we just flip the magnet board around and we go. And, you know, we have some some core values and some pillars that, that we try and establish that help keep our culture strong no matter who's coming in. And we, we try to hold a high standard to that. And whoever's here, that's who we're going to go with that day. Well, Jay, I'll say this. For the people that have watched the Coyotes team all year, I, I, I think they should all take their hats off to you. A testament to the guys that they have seen go through the doors of the Coyotes organization this season and been able to play a significant role the entire year. You know, we go Mayo, and now you're looking at Michelli and Carconi, what they're and doing. Mosier. And Mosier, what he has done this year. So... Honestly, I know how difficult it can be down there. And sometimes, you know, you, your staff gets forgotten. But but honestly, sincerely, from all the fan base up here, great job for what you've done down there. And I know um, there's still a slim window open for the playoffs for this year. So we're going to root for you down the stretch. And I say this, too. Once this season is all done and we talk about down the I-10, 
I hope on your way up the I-10, you can stop by the studio. We could have one more wrap up show with you in studio and kind of talk about fun stuff and get you ready for your summer. I might have to go full flannel and shirt, black shirt. <laughs> what do you know? Look like a okay. 90s band. Jeans. A 90s band show. I got jeans and a flannel on. Look how about that no suit and tie here at PHNX. Gotta love it. <laughs> Jay, thank you so much for joining us and best of luck the rest of your season. Yeah, thanks for having me. Thanks. Thanks, Jay.